Hello YouTube, today another Nadi or Not video straight from the website. I'm not doing a review of a specific uh, YouTube personality today. I've pretty much ran out of uh, content for that. Unless you find one of these that's hidden somewhere that I don't have the link to. I've done Bugenhagen, I've done Nippet, I've done uh, Alpha Destiny. And those I know, so I made videos about them. But for the rest of the people who that guy covered, I don't know them. That being said, it doesn't mean that we're done with that website because there are a ton of articles written about natural bodybuilding. And because I disagree with uh, the methodology and the philosophy of the author so much on his Natty or Not reviews, I thought that there was a strong chance I was going to disagree with the rest. And bingo, it's true. So we're going to continue uh, diving deep into that because it gives me a nice base to bounce my ideas off of and offer to you what I consider to be natural bodybuilding and all of the ways that I'm achieving my body and that I want you to achieve yours as well. The article today is called Why Lifting Light Weights is Better Than Lifting Heavy Is Classic Strength Training for Suckers? If you've watched my hypertrophy series, you already know what I think about that. <sighs> Disclaimer. If you want to go and read the article, because I will be quoting the article, but I'm going to jump uh, deeper into the text. Why? Because the introduction is basically a little story about how he, that guy, went to the gym, deadlifted, uh, was made fun of by some uh, old guy for his bad form, and then decided to just not deadlift for a month. It personally made me sad, and uh, it might make you sad too. Because I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of someone who is so weak-minded that another man's words are able to keep you out of the gym for a month. This is uh, pathetic. But I feel for that person because uh, life is tougher than that. The people are going to come to you and say many things. If you, if you care about what they say, you're in trouble. You're never going to go anywhere. You're going to spend your life in your bed. I'm going to jump directly into the actual text past the narrative uh, structure of the introduction. But I just need to quote that. He says, I stopped lifting for month. Not a month, sorry. Month. I lost all motivation. Why bother? It sounds like an eight-year-old who was scolded at lunch because he tried to grab an extra juice box and then he didn't want to go to school anymore month without lifting. I couldn't go two days without lifting. Even if the gym was on fire, I would still go. It blows my mind. But it shows also to you that the type of person who don't believe in natural bodybuilding and think that there's a natural limit, that's the type of people. They're wimps. Don't take advice from them if you don't want to be a wimp. I start. He says, after a long break, I woke up to the same weight, but with a much better form. Guess what? My back complained even louder, despite the better technique. So he's, ba he's basically saying he deadlifted with poor form, got pain in his spine, because of course, and then he deadlifted with good form and uh, had still some pain. There are many reasons for that. F first off, if you've deadlifted once with bad form, who tells you that you know what good form is? A ton of guys who think that they pull good form have atrocious form on the deadlift. Uh, and if you tell them something, they'll tell you, oh, it's, 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 it's how I live the most weight. Yeah, but that's not good form. And also, maybe that guy hurt himself and then tried again and the pain was still there. If you hurt yourself squatting with poor form and then the next day squat with perfect form, guess what? The pain is still going to be there. I broke my ribs because I was an idiot and then I, I deadlifted with perfect form. The pain was there. Why? The rib is broken. You think the rib is going to be like, oh... This is good form, bro. No, the injury is still there. You have to pay the price of the injury and move on. And his conclusion, instead of thinking, I'm an idiot, I need to work on myself, he thinks, I did the wrong thing and got pain, then I did the right thing and got pain again. This is a victim's mentality. This is a, a, the mentality of thinking, oh, no matter what I do, the word is against me. There's no such thing as the word, right? The, especially with people like this who don't believe in God, but they somehow believe that there's something out there to get them. Very convenient. He says this will happen to you too. You will arrive at weights that will somehow always manage to drain you. 
and every body weight there are hard limits when you are close to them it takes an, an immense amount of work to reach beyond while avoiding joint pain the weight becomes so stressful on your structure that you may get injured even when you do everything right there's so much to unpack here you first off you can get stronger at the same weight i think i'm the living proof of that i've been standing at the same weight even dropping sometimes below 210 my lifts have all gone up if you look at my playlist everything is going up i'm not getting injured i don't have any joint pain why because i know how to train and if a weight drains you my advice is stick to that weight right and progress if you do the same weight for the same amount of reps in the same tonnage for two months and it still drains you and you're not able to progress then it means that you need more stimulus somewhere in the program with variations that are close in specificity or your recovery is bad he says that at every body weight there are hard limits again as i said i disagree and when you get too close you need to put a ton of work in which yes that's you always need to put a ton of work in to progress and the more you progress the more work you need that's natural bodybuilding 101 while avoiding joint pain i don't agree joint pain is easy to avoid it's good nutrition a lack of stress good sleep good technique good volume and intensity manipulation those fives are going to prevent any joint pain and i know what i'm talking about i used to be the guy who had elbow pain and bicep tendon pain and knee pain and lower back pain and neck pain all the time that was my life and then i started actually learning how to program i stopped just doing compound movements and variations with no control guess what i'm growing and i have no pain but you need to be able to reflect on yourself and say okay it was my fault i did that to myself there's no magic uh, entity that did that to me it's my responsibility to fix it and but for him of course he didn't get to that conclusion he says strength training is for egomaniacs and suckers if you have a base all else is an egotistical pursuit of peaks that will never fill the void blah 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 a base the term base is used and abused by the lifting uh, community on fitness on youtube so much what is a base a lot of people are going to say a base is quad bench and deadlift those are in absolute terms, a knee flexion, an horizontal press, and a pull from the floor. First off, that's not covering every single movement pattern. They need to be covered. And in my opinion, novice programs need to include them all. That's an actual good base. But a base is there to build upon it. If you just build a base, then congratulations, you have a base. Are you going to lay a top on the base and sleep there? No, you're going to build a house and eventually you're going to upgrade the house with a garage. And then maybe a shed and then you're going to want to build a bigger house or a castle this is natural bodybuilding you're going to keep building and if you look at it from the myth, myth uh, the allegorical standpoint the higher the tower the better the physique the wider the base is going to need to be and the stronger the foundation is going to, going to need to be but eventually that's something that you end up realizing and that can only be done through strength training I'm a bodybuilder. Let's retake some of what strength training is. It's not only for strength athletes. Yes, they specialize in that. But we need to also get some of that for our own training. It's a very important part. Strength work is key for bodybuilding. For the reasons that I'm going to develop as I keep talking about what he says. And that guy calls himself Truth Seeker. I don't think that's an appropriate name for him. He discusses the real driving force behind heavy lifting. And he speaks from his point of view, the point of view of someone who, we, as we saw with the introduction, is a weak-minded individual. He says that he wanted to get big as hell. I can relate. He wanted to enjoy other people's admiration. I cannot relate. I don't care about other people. He wanted the insects to look at him and feel bad about how good he was read that sentence and think to yourself one this is not an anime we're not talking about an anime villain this is a real human being who wrote that who thinks like this for me i want to develop my strength for myself but if i can inspire others and show them the way then that's what i want i don't want to humiliate people 
I don't want my physique to make people feel bad. I want them to feel good and empowered. That's why I promote natural bodybuilding. I don't want people to feel bad about how good I am because I want people to know they can get there too. He says, he continues in his madness. He wanted the demon of humiliation to wrap around their steroid loaded hearts. First off, apparently he did that to make people who take PDs feel bad. One, you're never, for the most part, going to be able to uh, challenge people who take PDs because people take PDs because they work, right? Most of the time, I think that guy w uh, was looking at natural lifters who were better than him and his excuse in his head was, oh, they're taking PDs. No, they just put in the work. But even then, for this channel, Natural Hypertrophy, I'm all in for natural bodybuilding, all in. But I don't feel ill uh, intense towards uh, PD users. If anything, if I can convince them to stop, uh, uh, do, uh, do a, uh, a period of time without PDs and, and try and become clean, I would want to encourage people to do that. I don't, I'm not jealous of these people. I feel bad for them because I, I want to protect them. As silly as it sounds, I really do. He clearly has something against these people. Uh, it's insane. He continues, whether you admit it or not, you have the same motive. No, this, this is a strange uh, point of view. Like he, first off, not everyone feels the same. And also, I hope that most people in the gym don't feel, feel like him. And you also know that that guy is small. You know that that guy is small. Where are those weird aspirations coming from? Like a guy who's very big naturally, like after 10 years, who's a little bit cocky and a hothead. I can live with that. He built something, but if you're... If you are a small dude, just focus on yourself. Don't, don't project that weird ego thing. People say, as he says, that people do it for health. That's nonsense. Uh, heavier weights, uh, the heavier you lift, the bigger you are supposed to get, the larger the barbell, the bigger the envy in the spectator's heart. Repetose poppers and others pretending to do it for function are liars. Okay, I don't necessarily disagree with that. Uh, squats, bench, and deadlifts are not functional lifts. And I'm going to say also that functional lifts are contextual and for the most part, nonsense. W what is functional? If you, are, if you are a mover, then you're going to be doing, for example, Atlas stones because that's going to replicate the deep hip hinges you're going to be into when you grab a couch, for example. Uh, but it's depending on your needs. People who say, oh, I train functional. Usually it's calisthenics athletes. How is doing pull-ups functional? Are you trying to climb uh, buildings every day in your life? No, nothing is functional. We don't do that for function. I agree with that uh, in that red type of rhetoric. We do that for certain goals. Bodybuilders do that to get bigger. Powerlifters do that to get stronger. Let's admit that. I know that there is a, a, a stigma around it, as if we were wasting our time. How is someone training for sprints not wasting their time, but we are? They are also just training for sprints. How, how much do you sprint in real life? Do you try to outrun lions every day in your life? No. You do things because you want to do them. You don't need to justify yourself. Just do them. There's no such thing as functional training. And uh, he also explains that advanced naturals don't get bigger even when their strength increases. That, of course, that title itself gives me a headache because it's mathematically uh, just important, completely. If your strength gets bigger and your program is started in a way that you have strength work and variations that make up the most of the tonnage like I have, if you get stronger on the squat, every single knee flexion gets stronger, which increases your tonnage exponentially. So you're going to get bigger. If you don't believe me, I, I think it was four, four months ago, I taped my legs. I was at 26 inches. I kept training with all of my variations, all of my deadlifts, all of my squats. They all got stronger. Guess what happened? The legs got bigger. They gained half an inch. Rocket science. But to continue quoting him, the experts in natural lifting who are almost exclusively not natural, he's talking about Bugenhagen here, say that if you add 50 pounds to all the major lifts, you will experience a surge of extra growth. Sweet, yes. If you get 50 pounds on your deadlift, you're already going to get some growth. But on your bench, it's going to make you look like a completely different person. 
Unfortunately, many are at the point when adding 50 pounds to a lift requires great sacrifices, capable of producing under undesirable results. He's talking about joint pain here. As I explained, if your training is on point, you're not going to get any type of pain. And But I agree with the great sacrifice thing. The difference between me, who believes in natural bodybuilding, and him, who doesn't, is that he presents that as a bad thing. Life is sacrifices. If you wanted to not have to sacrifice, then you can just check out of life. It's possible. Your life is going to be completely unfulfilled, but it's possible. But if you want to get bigger, yeah, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to train hard. And of course, adding 50 pounds to a lift is going to take a lot of time. He says also that if you succeed in gaining the extra pounds, muscular gains are not guaranteed because strength can be amplified without hypertrophy. Yes, to a point. Meaning that the neurological adaptation you're going to get when you start doing a new lift is going to skyrocket your strength. That's true. After, I was going to say a year, not even a year, after six months of practicing that lift every single week, that adaptation is gonzo. Now, the only thing that's happening is your muscles are getting stronger. You're not becoming more technically sound at that lift. You're already at such a high level of proficiency that the poundage you might gain because your technique is now cleaner, unless you have very bad form, or you have a revelation, which sometimes happen, is not going to matter much. What's going to matter is muscular hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Your muscles get bigger, so you get stronger. And most people don't realize how much a tiny increase in uh, muscle size results when it comes to strength. It's insane. Muscle fibers are no joke. They produce force like you wouldn't believe. He explains, as I said, that if your central nervous system gets more effective, if your joints get stronger, and if your muscles get bigger, a denser, then you'll get more strength without size. The nervous system I already explained. The stronger joints, joints grow so slow. They grow much slower than muscle. Yes, your joints are going to get thicker and stronger, but it cannot account for the amount of weight you can gain on a lift in a year. It just not, it's not physi physiologically possible. And then he says denser muscles. Denser muscles are a good thing. I mean, and also your muscles are not just going to get denser. Like your bicep is not going to decide, oh, I'm just going to get super dense, but I'm not going to gain a single 0.001 of an inch. That's not possible. Again, this is the natural limit that these people have in their head where they have to invent things to justify it. And even if it was true, a 80 inches arms that just gets denser is still going to look insanely impressive and eventually is going to look much bigger than 18 inches. He says that if your goal is hypertrophy, which is what I do on this channel, the extra weight is close to worthless. Never believe people who say that extra weight is the way to go for progressive overload and for volume and intensity control. I'm not saying stack weight on the bar like a maniac, but you need progression. If you don't have progression on the bar, then you're going to eventually not progress with your physique. Blah, blah, blah. And then he says something that is probably the worst part of the article. A realistic definition of advanced for him. So what he defines as advanced outside of the powerlifting definition is a lifter with three or more years of persistent training. That's not advanced. That's some people are going to be barely out of the novice phase by then. And also it's not taking into consideration where people start. Three years into my training, I was 170. Was I advanced? No, it, it depends on the methodology of training. For me, if you call yourself advanced, you better have been training for a decade hard, which is why I don't call myself advanced. I'm intermediate. Some body parts I have are advanced, but me, myself, as an individual, no, because I'm still not done with my 10 years of hard training. I made a video about that called No One Trains for 10 Years. Check it out. And then he says that the goal is not to lift the most weight, which I agree with, but his idea is in the wrong place. He says you can get stronger by lifting less, which only applies to people who haven't realized yet that you're supposed to do reps and you're supposed to mix the rep ranges. And then, 
and I might have to make another video just on that because he's right, it did make me mad. He says, he's an, here's an example representing a potent rage trigger for many. And that's an article that I'm going to open and uh, put in my bookmarks, if I can click on it. Why can't I click on it? Okay, I clicked on it, but it's, it's, it's sending me to that. I will make an article on this one. It's called, Why Deadlifting with a Mixed Grips, Straps, or Hook Grip is for Cheaters. If you're a powerlifter and you're watching that video, please don't smash your screen. It's going to be okay. I'm with you. He says, grip that thing naturally. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to make another video for that. I think I'm going to end the video here. Because the idea of only gripping what you can grip is so stupid that it deserves its own segment. And we're going to end with what he calls stagnation or content. The world is super focused on gains. The status quo is to want more and more and more and then some more. Yes, that's human life, right? I personally uh, subscribe to the Zen uh, mindset, but the Zen mindset to me is not become a stone on the ground and then do nothing. You're supposed to keep evolving. We are still as a species evolving. Participate in that. Just only for your own sake so that you are not stagnant. Stagnancy is death. He says that we live in a perpetual state of dissatisfaction because we always ask for more. I would say the opposite. We don't ask for enough or we ask for things, but we don't actually do it. Check the video about envy I made. People who talk a lot but don't like hard work are usually very miserable. People who want the, the, the moon but work like maniacs are usually very happy with their lives. If you don't succeed, you cry because your goal did not manifest. If you win, you are unhappy because your victory is not what it appeared to be. You can hold on to success forever. It's a lose-lose situation. This is a black pill mindset. Avoid that at all costs. He is basically describing the way your life is going to be if you espouse that type of belief. Yes, you're never going to be happy. Why? You gave up. People who give up are not happy. You need to keep striving. Always. Always. It's the most important thing in your life. Never let go of that. That fire is all you have. Then he says that that mentality is not needed for natural bodybuilding. Actually, it's all that matters. Spirituality, in my opinion, is more important than physicality. This is what's in there is going to create what you have here. This body was created by that brain. I, you look at my body back in the days. I, there is, you show the way I looked when I was uh, 18 to people and you show it now. The transformation is so insane. And I, I say that, I don't want, I'm not even trying to be humble because I'm proud of it. And I know that it was all due to my spirit. And I know that the same can be applied to every single individual as long as they stay on the right path. And then he discusses uh, reaching a state where you're good enough. What is good enough? Mediocre. That's what good enough is. And stay there for a long time with minimal effort. Some say this is stagnation. Stagnation and content have many overlapping points. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, this is a guy who got to like 170, who's still a skinny dweeb, but who's okay with it because he's slightly more muscular than the average person. I'm going to say right now, if this is your mentality, get off this channel. Unsubscribe. You're not going to be happy with what I have to say. My mindset is keep pushing, keep getting bigger, keep getting stronger. We're not here to throw a pity party, we're not here to stay mediocre. We're here to be exceptional, mentally and spiritually, and to inspire others. If you want stagnation, you can find it everywhere in the world around you, you're surrounded by it. I'm not going to promote that type of thinking, and this is why this video was necessary. So I'm going to end there. Uh, he, he says to close the article, gains, you won't get them as a natural. I say gains, the only way that the, to make proper gains that are going to last for the rest of your life is to make them naturally. So stay in Adi bros. Thank you for watching the video. I will keep ripping that website to shreds because it promotes a nefarious ideology that I am 100% against. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.